So this this meeting is being recorded. It will go up on the uh, on the diocesan website, but just so everybody's aware, both the audio and video are being recorded. And we then turn to our to our bishop to open us with prayer, please. Thank you very much, Alex, and welcome everybody to the uh, second of our, our budget consultations. And uh, good to have you all here today, as Alex says, on this rainy street day. It's good to be inside and online when it's like this. So anyway, we begin with prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you praise and thanksgiving for the beauty of this day, even in the midst of the rain and the Christmas of fall, is the beauty of the colors around us. And especially, as always, the glory of your presence with us and the power of your spirit that draws us together. The mission and the ministry that you entrust to us. And as we gather today, the stewardship of the work that we are called to do. Both locally within our parishes and our communities, within our diocese, within our country and around the world. It's the Church of Jesus Christ in this place. We ask you to be with us today with the finance team who will be presenting, with those who will be asking questions and for the work that we will do together. Be with those who lead us and those who care for us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. So today is the um is the the, the next step in the, the, the budget process. We're gonna go through a few things today. Um as as we go through how this is put together, where we are currently, uh, where we are headed. Um, so that we can work our way um, through what the what the plan is, the draft plan at this point for next year. So there we go. So I think we 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 know what we're here and why we're here. Oops. Oops, sorry, I just got to jump screens here to get the. There we go. There, let me change. So the goals of, of today um, is to, first of all, communicate where we are with the, the 2023 budget and, and preparation. Second thing is to provide input to Senate Council who meet next week as they consider the 2023 budget. As always in these sessions, to listen and 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 consult on what people's thoughts and questions are, and then finally is working through better understanding through better communications. So in doing so, this is within the context of 2023 planning, um, building on 2022, where we have three quarters of a year behind us, and and we now build forward budget and plans for next year, but it's also another piece of the step beyond 2023 as we continue our, our long-term life. As always, we're open, constructive discussion, try to avoid uh, ax grinding, try to you know focus on what, what's possible, what the alternatives are, what solutions there may be, an open but direct but polite dialogue. And then the final just observation is that to discover as we work through these things is that everything in our life, we're reminded in our life as a diocese is interrelated and inter interlinked with each other, church to church, group to group, program to program, and, and how we balance everything out um, is, is always an important element. So the first piece I'm gonna address is where we are um, our financial results to the end of August. And then what we do is we call the September view or the forecast. So what we do is take the, in this case, the first eight months of results, and we build those, look at the balance of the year, what was in the budget, but also what our current view is based upon what we know, and that produces a forecast. So. Jan to August of actuals with forecast for September to December. So the high level view of where we're at. So year to date, our income is slightly below budget. I'll walk through through the actual numbers in a minute, but we're slightly below on income. Um, 
much larger down on on expenses and as a result the budget is to, to this point the deficit that we expected to incur is much lower so we're tracking positively against our budget plan for the year forecast um, income will be down for the year uh, expenses will be down for the year and the budget will again the deficit from what we had planned will be significantly lower than we had budgeted. For those that like the actual numbers, um, there's and highlighted being the three key numbers are our budget income. We expect uh, for or for the, the actual year to date, the day, we're about 35,000 down. Uh, that's a combination of CMM adjustments um, interest. So we have put a number of churches that were paying um, on their uh, their accounts were paying interest. Uh, we've put a number of programs in place with some of those churches, and the net of that is the interest that we're receiving from churches is down year over year. That's a good news, bad news thing. And then finally, our fees are up slightly. On the expense side. Um, we, we are down about $100,000, and a big chunk of that is in staffing. We deliberately held um, to make adjustments in staff, um, and so that had an impact. Uh, we've been down somewhat in legal. It's a floating thing, and our interest expense, what we're paying, uh, of course, as interest rates have risen, um, that's gone up. So the some of the areas on expenditure for parish support are down. We didn't, of course, as we know, unfortunately, the bishop uh, was unable to attend Lambeth. Um, so the bad news there, but the good from that was that we did save those costs. And General Synod was also deferred by a year into 2023. So all of that from a from a to the end of the August actuals. We are better than budget by about seventy thousand dollars. The deficit level. Forecast for the year. Um, again, you can see the actual numbers. Income down, expenses down almost twice that. So the deficit is uh, is is going to be significantly down from the hundred and nineteen that we had passed in the budget. For those that that want to look at another layer of granularity, um, that's the, um, the, the the groupings in our breakdown. As you know, when we in our financial planning and reporting, we we break into those areas: the bishop's office, business, finance, and administration, communications, governance, clergy support development, lay support development, parish support and development ministry support and development beyond our borders and then our total expenses. So that just gives you another layer of detail, both in terms of the budget for the year and what the forecast currently looks like. Well, with that, I'll move into the, uh, the, the budget discussion around 2023. So if you look at a budget from a, a, a textbook or a dictionary perspective, simply put, it's an estimate of income and expenses over a future period. Um, and then it's usually compiled and, and reevaluated on a periodic basis. We do that quarterly. Uh, a budget is basically a financial plan for a defined period. In our case, it's a, it's a calendar year. Our fiscal year is our calendar year. And aside from earmarking resources, it also helps as you set goals, measure outcomes, plan for contingencies. So that's what the textbooks teach you. Budgets are, of course, in a church context, it's a it's a little bit um, broader than that and a little more focused in other areas. And we look at the budget as the guide that, that we want to reflect what God is calling us to do. To, it's a, a, a note and a reminder of both the abundances we've been given and the limitations that we have. 
course, it's a management and governance tool. Um, we drive to have transparency, comprehensiveness, fiscal responsibility, reflection of the challenges at the congregation level, parish or area ministry level, and the diocesan level. Of course, at the end of the day, we all plan. We don't set out to do things without having built a plan first. And part of the plan is under <laughs> cost so that we know that we can actually do what we've set out to do. All of this. Oops. So the this is the chart that we've we've used for a number of years. Um, this, but this is the summary of our mission, of our vision and strategy, and that's driven by, built on the gospel, pulled together by um, connected and engaged, but then the focus being investing in ministry, mission-driven stewardship, and the service of our communities. So everything we do continues to look backwards and forwards at, at our vision and our strategy. Of course, the tagline we have used for a number of years being, we're trying to shift from maintenance to mission. Of course, we've been on a journey um, from 2011 when we, we took a number of actions at the first piece early in Bishop Michael's uh, episcopacy. Um, we've done things along the way where we've We've cut things, we've closed things, suspended things. We've done consolidations, reinvented a number of things, um, done expense avoidance where we could, shifted, shifted investments and, and expenditures. And then of course, the last couple of years, in case no, anybody forgot, there was a pandemic that, uh, that has affected a, a, a range of things. And again, just so we don't lose perspective on some of the, the choices, the decisions, the actions uh, and sacrifices that have had to be made in the last number of years around you know, the diocesan camp with Hyanto, the book room, um, the, the old 90 Johnson Street, driven by both the operating costs and the capital costs. And then finally, we've also reduced our proportional gift to the National Synod. So in total, those those have, have represented large amounts of uh, of both capital and expense. And it's also been driven to help tighten the, the predictability and manageability of, of where we are. Now we are a long way from the beginning um, and we're a long way from the end. Now, obviously, the the uh, as we look at things carrying forward, both the next couple of years, but but living well into the future as we as we live out the faith that we're called to be. The other piece of context is is looking where our our goal has always been to try and break even. Um, at the end of the day, anytime you run a deficit, you need to know how you're going to pay for that. And through doing all of that, there are some costs that are manageable in the short term and midterm. Other costs that are more long term manageable. And I think an easy example of that is, for example, a lease, purchasing equipment, purchasing buildings. Those are long term fixed costs. Um, mm -hmm. Lease arrangements typically are long term costs. Short term things can be adjusted. Um, there are other pieces that sit in between that are some of them are more manageable than others. Some of them are discrete choices you can make. Other ones are, are weaved together because things are interrelated. Finally, of course, you're balancing that with income. So the process that we've worked through to get to here and where we'll go from here, you know, we took input, we did consultation on priorities back in June. Um, we now go through this consultation session, Senate Council has uh, has considered this at their last meeting, the September meeting, which was actually held in October, um, and then it will go back to Council for further consideration, and ultimately it's Council's role um, to to uh, to approve the budget. 
And obviously we look to get that done by the November meeting. Council normally doesn't meet in December. So a number of elements that um, particularly relate to the 2023 budget process. So the last number of years, the and CPI, by the way, is the Consumer Price Index. That is a statistic published by Stats Canada. We use uh, any of these numbers. We use Stats Canada information. Um, and so the CPI, Consumer Price Index, and there's a number, a range of them, but they're used to look at how the cost of living is moving. And of course, everyone knows the last number of years, we've been we're pretty much in the one to 2% range per year. Um, as we know, towards the back end of 2021 and then into 2022, we've seen a, a significant increase in the CPI. But sorry, that both including and without gasoline, because it, it they, they factor the the the, uh, the impact of gas. That's often one that people talk about, but actually it's running less than a number of other things. Lots of numbers, but again, as we do the analysis, we look at um, on a month by month basis. We have always traditionally used um, January of the the year as and the prior year's inflation as what has set our factors, both within the diocesan budget and the grids, um, have always been based on the prior year. So 2021. Um, in terms of what we would do this year in 2023 is the way that it's been done in the past, partly based on the availability of data. Now you can go and look at this on the, the stats can site on a daily basis. So we look at a number of different pieces. Um, obviously, we look at Ontario specifically versus the Canadian wide, but I've put both up there so you can have a bit of a feel and then there's the all items, which is the overall change, rented accommodations, and of course, our housing allowances are based upon rental um, figures. And, and then private transportation, looking at cost of, uh, of, of driving. And these are all based over the 12 month change. So August would be comparing to August of 2021, July, 2022 compared to July of 2021. Those are all 12 month factors. So we did hold a session. I know a number of you were on it at the, the uh, June 25th. Um, so some of the areas that uh, that came up in that conversation around um, churches looking for more help with stewardship, congregational development, um, resources, looking for more help and finance, um, looking for churches starting to, to, to feel the stress of being able to get people to, to actually uh, do their books and act as a treasurer. Um, churches looking for support uh, for creation care, particularly as some of the environmental factors um, around their how their carbon, for example, their carbon footprint looks. Those concerns raised around um, aging clergy and the need for younger clergy and how we attract new clergy. Discussion around print based newspaper. Um, the ministry allocation fund, which of course is where the funds that come from the sale of properties uh, go to the ministry allocation fund by Canon. So as we sell any properties, um, assets go into that. Um, and discussion then, and that allocation fund is under the direction of Senate Council. Yeah. Today, it's used for the new for the new ministry. Oh, I'm just going to put. Uh, hang on a second. I'm just going to put everybody on mute for a moment. Yeah. I didn't do that initially. Um, and then just one second. Of, there's a couple of other people I can I can come in. Let me do that. Let me do that. And oh, sorry. Um, so a discussion there on the uh, around do we start to use that ministry allocation fund 
Uh, do we use the income from that to, uh, to, to, to start to support uh, ministry and program and as CMM to, to support our infrastructure? And discussion about is there a, do, do we start to cap the capital on that fund? So, and then finally, is as always, the discussion um, around the proportional gift to the national church and uh, and and how that um, how we how, how we look at that. A few other factors as we start into we started into the planning. We did start for the fifth, we use our our forecast, so we didn't base it on a hundred and almost $20,000 deficit. We based it on the 50K deficit. We know that churches in 2021, that churches continued to, we continued to have closures. Churches income was, was uh, stressed. And we also know there wasn't as much uh, SUS money, wage subsidy in 2021. So we know that, that we will see further reductions in, in income in 2021. That's the data that's used for CMM in 2023. We know we plan on a synod next year, and that brings costs with it. We know there's a planned general synod, uh, which was deferred from 2022. We don't know how the financial markets, positive or negative, will 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 float next year. Um, we continue to benefit from cost reduction. And efficiency and work we've done, investments we've made, for example, in systems and aligning staff. We're just going in. Uh, they're going around to see what happened to the uh, the sound side of things. Can everybody hear me? Oh, that good. We should be able to get back. We're we'll back on here in a second. As they say, technical problems are temporary. Please do not adjust your settings. That one working. Can you hear me now? Yep. That's great, Alec. Thanks. Cool. What point did you lose me? You were talking about the change in diocesan staff on the other factors uh, sheet? OK. Um, You're just kind of rolling down through that list. Those are all the factors that, that fit into that, as I mentioned. OK. So those are the factors, as I mentioned, micro. There are places where we are subsidized. For example, Microsoft provides us with a grant. Um, that uh, that supports uh, the, the use of Azure. So we get about thirty five hundred US a year. Uh, for our for hosting a lot of our applications, so there's a uh, there's a range of them that uh, that we get where we are increasing. The province is uh, contributing rent 
to the Diocese of Ontario um, because I'm um, for the par portions of my day when I'm utilizing office space here, uh, the province is paying uh, the diocese uh, for rent for that use. So there's a number of areas we've got we've got support and income coming in. Of course, one of the key factors, and we hear this quite heard a fair bit from parishes um, around what's going to happen with the grids. Uh, and so we've we've done a fair bit of looking at this. We've had conversations with other dioceses as we consider um, how what what they're planning to do. Um, we've looked at what the national, the pension office is doing. And so there's when you look at our stipend grids and salary grids for staff, they're based upon um, a horizontal, which is years of service, or in the case of clergy, years of ordination, staff years of service, um, and, and experience, and then a horizontal. Um, so each year people move um, to the, the, across the vertical as they gain experience. So that is generally a two and a half to three and a half percent increase on that front for the clergy that caps at 30 years once you get to the 30 year mark you don't go any farther and for staff it's 12 years um, that that cap sits so that whatever we do we move the grids by for example moving them by inflation um, that two and a half three for those that are still moving um, continues on top of that housing allowance is based upon um, rented accommodations with utilities We've talked to other dioceses, as I mentioned, and we've talked to the National Pension Office, and the the, the general that everybody is fitting into is somewhere between three and a half and four and a half percent is where they are adjusting their grids, uh, moving their housing allowances. In the national case, it's four percent. And of course, parishes, as I mentioned, have expressed concern just based upon the fact that uh, you know, we've, we've got churches that are trying to balance things as well. For the mileage side and the CRA has gotten much more focused around this. They've moved in the month of August. They moved their what they refer to as their reasonable rate to 61 cents per kilometer, 5,000 clicks. After that, it's 55 cents. To be clear, what that means is that if anything that's paid above that is then a taxable benefit. So um, our current policy is 61 up to 18,000. Um, they would consider anything paid above that first five or above 55 after the first five is actually a taxable benefit. So we try, it was 59 cents in 2021. And the CRA, as they audit, tends to pick that up. So this is what we've looked at to this point. This will all go to council for approval. But at this point, we're looking at adjusting the grids by 4% uh, in terms of the cost of living, increasing housing by 4%, leaving mileage as it sits. Um, and then in within the bu budget, we're using 4% for general inflation. So that those are at this point what the the intention is to, to take to council to move the grids by. It's also what's baked into the budget estimates. When we look at income, about three quarters, just over three quarters of our income comes from um, CMM. About 7% comes from investment. That doesn't count what's in the ministry allocation fund. It also does not count what is in what, what we have as restricted funds. So we have a range of restricted funds that are either externally or internally restricted. The income from those, for example, would go to the clergy widows pension, uh, would go to those types of things that have specific restrictions placed on them, not to general income. And then fees are about 16% of our income. 
again, each of our areas of the budget, um, each of the line areas. So again, the bishop's office, which of course is the bishop, his assistant, registrar services, which are done by the bishop's assistant, bishop's travel, and, and, and miscellaneous. Business finance and admin is the, the biggest area. It's got the executive officer, archdeacon, the financial officer, the accounting staff, admin services and support, our facility costs, our IT and infrastructure, the archives, PR, HR, central payroll, accounting services, PAG, financial consulting, and the work we do there, uh, insurance and the administration of things there and the diocesan insurance, legal costs, investment fund management, cemeteries, property and real estate management, and then general office and administration. So it's the, the, for the most part, you would see as part of that BF&A, as we call it. Communications, obviously the communications officer, and then all the vehicles that we that uh, that we use for communications, um, and whether those are the things you think of or some of the things you might not, um, but the all of those pieces are supported by the communications line. Governance, of course, synod, synod council, um, audit. Our audit fees are between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars a year. Um, and that's part of governance. Um, and then costs related to canons and governance. Those are in that governance area. Got the clergy support and development. So the, the whole parts that enter through postulancy and, and clergy development, um, our opcoat and theological college support, uh, clergy bursaries, sabbatical support, clergy conferences and retreat and other events, our EAP program, uh, clergy moving, deanery and archdeaconry support, um, students equipping new clergy. There's grants that are put in place as clergy are ordained, um, post-grad deacons and ordinations. Those all go into that uh, clergy support and development section. Lay support and development um, around lay education, Bursaries for laity, uh, lay development work, and the lay readers. Parish support and development um, as we look at um, areas like stewardship, congregational development, uh, new ministry personnel support as we there's uh, uh, some of the grants that are in place there. The cathedral grant, uh, viability plans where we're supporting churches that, that have gone through the viability plan process, mostly due to receivables, uh, HR support, legal support. Both of those have been significant in the last few years. General consulting that we do and, and, and take access to, uh, screening and faith, um, screening and, and uh, pandemic support. Ministry support and development. So the Archdeacon of Ministry and Program cost there. Justice and Peace Coordinator, which is a shared cost with the uh, the Archdiocese of Kingston. Uh, Doors, the refugee program, which again is a shared program with the Archdiocese, uh, the Green Group, and other external groups that, that we make donations to. Beyond our borders, the national proportional gift is the big thing there to the General Senate, Provincial Senate assessment, our delegate cost, to national and provincial synods, and of course, Lambeth as we had planned. So when you take those categories, and I'll, I'll walk you through a few of these now, the, what we've done at this point is I'm still referred to it as scoping because there are still some inputs we don't have. Um, our executive officer, Venerable David Seltzer, sits on the National Pension Committee, so David will be going to the national pension meetings this week, which will hopefully then provide us what the costs changes are going to be on benefit programs. So we're not able to build that into our budget yet. We've put a, a factor in, but we don't know specifically how much our benefit costs, health benefits, pension plan, 
Con Ed, long-term disability, life insurance, those types of things. Those will be, once approved by the pension committee, will come back to us. So those documents, those are all numbers that we're going to need to tighten up once we get the actuals in for those things. But what you can see on this one is, and I'll, and I'll carry it to the next level in a minute, but it gives you what the 2020 actual was, what the 2021 actual was, what the 2022 forecast looks like, and then what the, the, the scope, the, the, the preliminary draft budget looks like for 2023. And as you can see, we are, our, 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 our overall costs are roughly holding flat. Um, our income is down a couple of hundred thousand dollars. And that is really the, the, the nub of the challenge that we work our way through. As we've seen um, um, contract a couple of hundred thousand dollars in our view of next year versus what it was back in 2020. And it had remained fairly constant for many years. It floats up and down a little bit, but for the most part, it has been right around uh, high 1.2 millions into the low 1.3 millions. Our expenses have pretty much stayed constant around 1.6 million. So there's been that level of consistency, which we saw, and in 2023, we see another piece of movement. For those that like um, the next layer of detail, um, that takes it in those categories, looks at the 2023 scoping, and what that reflects against the 2022 forecast, as we we talked, that's our best view of how this year is going to look, and therefore, and then the change in that, and rather than because it, when you're dealing with deficits and Deficits getting better is actually a negative, but so what, what I'm using is the term better, uh, which for income would mean more, for expense would mean less uh, and or worse. And so what you'll see is using better, worse. So things that are in brackets are generally in a worse condition. Things that are not in brackets are better, um, depending on the context of that item. So as you can see, our income, um, continues to, we were forecasting uh, another decrease there. And then you can see in each of the areas, how they add up. So our expenses overall going up just over a hundred compared to the forecast. And the income coming down by 50. So what you see against the current view is the deficit would increase about $160,000 to a total just over 200K. Also gives you a bit of a, just a, a proportion of where the expenses lie. And if you look at it, but the Bishop's office, business finance and admin, and the beyond our borders, pretty much the, the national and provincial, pretty much a, uh, is, is about close to three quarters of our of our total expenditures. The rest of it is uh, is is all single to, to, to 10%, less than 10%. So obviously when you look at a at a deficit of $200,000, um, one looks at what, how does one deal with that? How, how do you approach that um, mindful of both near term and adjusting towards the longer term. So we've identified a number of areas um, to, 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 to deal with that. And obviously, if you're going to run a deficit, you've got to be able to fund it from somewhere. Um, that's both from a books perspective, but it's also from a cash perspective. Because again, most of our expenses, with a few exceptions, are cash items. So you have to look at where the cash comes from, as well as the bookkeeping balance comes from. So we will not need the pan. We, we had held the pandemic reserve. That was the money that the diocese received um, that went from that came from SUS 
back in 2020 and 2021. We had held that to 2022 to deal with the deficit. Um, we have not needed it to the anywhere near the extent we did. There's, we still are estimating right now we would have about 90K of that left. So that's carried on the balance sheet, and we'd take that from a balance sheet asset, move it across to cover um, part of the deficit. One of the things that we talked about in the consultation session is starting to use some of the ministry allocation fund, which is from um, the sale of, of assets, principally property, um, and, and use some of the income from that uh, to support ministry parts of the budget. And using, as we look forward, CMM support our infrastructure costs and starting to use our allocation fund more to the income from that to support ministry. We do have a, a change that's going to happen before the end of the year. Unfortunately, at this point, the, the bishop's not able to to uh, to make any announcements around what that's going to be, but I have put a what in the business world we would call an overlay in place. Uh, we know there'll be about sixty five thousand dollars of relief um, that will come, uh, but I can't um, put that against anything at this point. And unfortunately, because of the, the just how it's being done, I can't really speak to what it is either. But we are comfortable that there is a 65K um, lift that's going to come there. Um, the deficit that we're forecasted in the in the scoping to have. Other options would be to start looking at programs and support for the general Senate gift. Those would be the, the other places to go. Factoring into how we approach that and the thinking that we've we've put into this is some of the what we've called directional changes. So some of them are the fact that we are seeing ongoing and increasing needs from our churches uh, for support. Mine says I lost. Yep, we're still there. You can join us in here if you like. So many on the Wi-Fi right now. It may have it may have bounced off. That's why we're running on an Ethernet connection here. Um, so that ongoing needs and and there, and there's a broad base of them. There's financial expertise and services. Some of that um, is, for example, bookkeeping. We have more churches that are struggling now to get someone just to keep the books. Um, and, and I separate bookkeeping and treasurer even though in many churches it's one person, those are two different categories because the treasurer does more than just keep the books. Um, they're providing the financial guidance, they're doing budgeting, um, they're making recommendations to the wardens, um, those kinds of things. So there's there's an ongoing need for that. As there's ongoing need for things like support with um, the increased reporting that's being driven by government. Um, there's Increase. We've had a bit of a, a holiday from its severe building issues, but we are seeing more and more churches that are now approaching um, potential major building challenges. Um, and you know whether that's towers, roofs, pointing, um, foundations, etc., um, accessibility in some cases. So you're seeing more challenges on the building side. So part of that being how they deal with it or what they should be doing. Opportunities for, for new ministry um, that church is finding things, but needing support to help work that through. Um, increasing uh, sort of partnered with that is, is building partnerships into communities. But that also brings a number of other things with it. It brings things like how do you structure a partnership? What's the legal responsibilities? How does liability? There's a ton of things that come as you build partnerships. They're great things. Our bishop speaks to it all the time. It's a critical part of our strategy, but it does take support. HR and legal has gone up um, quite significantly. We now 
For example, we have a, a parish where we've got a human rights tribunal issue. Um, we've got more cases where employment law um, is a factor. So there's all those pieces that that needing more help. There is, as we look at churches that are, are working through and with cost structure and changes in ministry needs, looking at the, the structure of, of a, a parish, of a church, or of a, of a ministry, a regional ministry, and how they need to, 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 to potentially adjust, and the ministry that supports them. And then finally is change management and, and how that um, plays through, is how you work through what to do, and then how you get there and how you, you manage that um, so that you get what you're after and not what you're not. We talked about the Ministry Allocation Fund, um, and, and of course that is, it has grown, the big increase there as we sold our properties in Lyndhurst, the former St. Luke's and the former Camp Ianto. Um, and again, they're looking at how we protect the capital because what we know is down the road, we have, uh, we will have capital needs as we go forward. Um, and the, the expression being not eating our seed corn. So that's a piece as we build that forward, at the same time looking at how do you utilize the income from that to support ministry? And, uh, and directionally saying CMM, which percentage wise hasn't changed, but the base in churches has, and we've seen several churches that are, that are no longer there anymore. As that continues to shift, the CMM become focused on the infrastructure and the support, the Bishop's Office, BFNA, those types of areas, and we utilize um, money to support ministry separately. And then the final thing, as we all know, the world is different in the through what that means in our churches, what it means in terms of attendance, what it means in terms of ministry, what it means in our community of needs, what it means in terms of areas like stewardship, both from a um, financial perspective, but just as importantly, and I think more becoming more critically is the stewardship of time and talent um, as we need people to sustain the work that we all do. So that's really the, the, the snapshot of, of where we sit. Um, one of the things that we've created, and I've this is actually a screenshot of the resources page. We talked about communications, but if on our website, www.ontario.anglican.ca, there is a section called resources. And one of those that we're, we're setting up is um, as we've set up, and Mark set this up as diocesan budget and financial planning. And so that'll be a section that will provide um, the both information. So on a quarterly basis, posting what our uh, what we've been to Synod Council with in terms of financial reporting, uh, posting recordings of uh, the intention as we go forward, doing a quarterly snapshot with the warden and treasurer calls to do a quarterly uh, review. Um, the budget material, our consolidated financials once they're audited, uh, all of those types of resources will sit in that space. So these charts that you saw today uh, by tomorrow, they should go up there along with the video recording of this session. And then of course, once the final budget is approved by council, it would go up there as well. There is always the opportunity to, to send input at budget at ontario.anglican.ca. Is the proposed budget going to be online? Once council approves it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, because then it has to be approved at Synod. Yeah, gotcha. it's got to be approved gotcha. by council. Right. This this is all there. What what exists is right here. Okay. Right? That's the the pieces that and then council. And so once we have that up, we'll, oh, sorry, I think I misunderstood your question. Once we go to take that document to council, the the, line, the, the detailed, the next layer behind that chart will go up on, the, on that site. And so 
with that, we can move to. Um, questions, um, let me just jump us back here so that. Stop sharing. No, oh, that back up. There it goes. Got to get it in the right direction. Everybody, I did place everybody on mute, but you can come off mute. And uh, any questions? What do you got? Thoughts or guidance to to provide inwards? If you don't wish to uh, to say something, you can go into the chat up above, and uh, we'll keep a log. We'll keep a, a log of that as well. Alex, can I? Jump in. I don't know if you can see that my hand is raised. It's Trish. Oh, sorry. Yep. I just. Now I can. I see you. And I see Donna. So, yep. <laughs> um, my question is about our confidence in the income expected when we don't have green sheets back, and especially it being a pandemic um, COVID. Uh, you know, lower income year. I'm just wondering if we should be expecting our income to be even lower since we don't have those return back. Normally we get them in June, but we don't, we haven't even done the green sheets for this year. So we've done most, most of those are in uh, part of the work. Now that we've got, um, we got our, our support level back up in the finance team. And our, our goal is to get those out in the next couple of weeks. But we've done most of this modeling is based on a combination of green sheet work and also the SUS, because for, for almost all of 2021, we still had um, we were still reporting every month. So we have a, you know, there's accessible income versus non-accessible income, but but with it pretty much gives us a, a fairly solid uh, base to work at. And of course, what it doesn't forecast is is the ability of churches in some cases to actually pay it. Right, that is one of the other factors that we we build into as we look at at some of that work. It still gets declared as income by canon. Um, the, the the CMM is charged. Uh, we we deal with churches that can't. For whatever reason, where the things build, we deal with that separately as an expense, not as an in, not as an income adjustment. Just for clarity. Uh, Donna Ferguson, got your hand up. Not hearing you, Donna. You may still be on mute if you're. Anybody else here in Donna? Okay, good. <laughs> well, not good, but. Well, let me jump over to Nancy McLeod. Archdeacon, you had a question? Um, yeah, a couple of things. Um, in, the, in the 2022 numbers, you talked about the savings uh, around Lambeth, um, and this pertains also to thinking about General Synod carry forward in our own diocesan um, synods about how budgeting is happening for that, because it was my understanding that that was done um, on um, a, a basis of it being apportioned over an entire period and set aside in a fund for those years when it happened. So I wonder if you could just say a word about whether there's consistency about how that's done over the different things or if it's done differently and how that's being budgeted um, now. And so our our historic pattern had been to 
provision each year uh, for particularly for Lambeth um, to set up the cost uh, so that it, it would be done over a, over a number of years. So there is on the balance sheet, there was some, some carried through there several years ago. There should have been a Lambeth in 2020, I think it was. Um, and so that when it became clear that there was not clarity, we, we did not set anything further up. Uh, so we, we do carry a, um, uh, an amount on the balance sheet to help defray future Lambeth costs. We could make a decision to, um, to fold that back into the current year, uh, but right now we still hold about 10K, 12K on the balance sheet. Um, if my memory serves me correctly for Lambeth. We have not done anything similar for our own synod uh, costs or general synod costs um, in a number of years. We have not, you know, sort of done provisioning. We've done, we've dealt with it in the year of. And the other question, sort of two sides of, I think the same coin um, and just wondering what discussions have taken place about it. You mentioned capping the capital on the ministry allocation fund. And, and I'm I'm wondering what discussion has taken place around that. But you also mentioned um, maintaining uh, uh, the capital um, so that that uh, bank is there rather than using from it. And I wasn't sure how those two things connected. So if you could say more about that, please. Sure, and I think at this point, um, it, it has been literally just that, conversations. Um, there is no specific, right now, um, canonically, everything that we take in goes to the Ministry Allocation Fund. And the only right, and Senate Council controls um, the use of that allocation fund. Right now, the only approved use of the Ministry Allocation Fund is for the new ministry fund, which funds reach and stretch grants. Uh, that's the only approved use of the f of of income from the fund. So that's where we sit today. What we would do if we went down the path we're we're looking at would be to ask council to re release some of the income, not capital, um, not only for next year, not only for reach and stretch grants but also to, to fund some of the ministry piece in the budget. Uh, there is no um, uh, there is no plan to do anything in terms of touching capital at this point. It's been a conversation in a number of places, but there would have to be a whole lot of, of, of work um, done and a whole lot of governance decision in order to do so. Answer your question. Uh, it it does yes, and I guess that begs and and I am mindful that we have seventeen people here, some of whom are diocesan staff, so not a lot of of our diocese who who are present to be part of this, but um, the necessity for conversations about. Uh, not just looking at the budgeting for the next year, but that sort of more global um, look at our finances and our direction and where we want that to be going. So again, the 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 current thinking that we're building towards is that um, we will bring to Synod a three-year financial framework um, that that will will come to to synod for consideration. Um, there are other dioceses that do that, um, and and that would because that will then and and properly so that the, the conversation at synod is a governance one, and it would be you know particularly focused around um, how do we get you know how do we look at it from a three year perspective, from a planning horizon. Um, that says not just worrying about the budget in the next year, but the following two years um, in terms of what the framework would look like. So from my corporate days, we would build an operating plan um, that would, would encompass three and sometimes five years, but in that longer term, and then 
that was a, there was a strategic plan that tended to be a 10 year window, an operating plan, and then an actual budget. That's that's the thinking. I don't know if anyone has any reflections on that, but that's what we are thinking in terms of coming in terms of planning for Synod next year. Um, I saw a note from Donna. Let me just go into the chat here. I just want to confirm. Yeah, I so Donna, we we at, at this point can't confirm um, the changes in benefits. Um, I, I don't know if you caught that at the front, but we are the pension committee meets Thursday and Friday, and in fact, um, um, our executive officer is a member of the national pension committee. He'll be attending those meetings live and in person, and out of that meeting, they will approve the rates um, on that will affect all of the things that we're looking for: the health benefit, extended health, uh, pension, con ed, um, LTD, insurance, etc. So that full benefit pack. Um, at this point, we've budgeted in the diocesan side. We've budgeted four percent. Uh, and some of them go up based upon stipend, housing, et cetera. But we've, but benef we've just speculatively set it at 4%. We'll know better next week. We will update council on Tuesday uh, and hopefully have the, the, the budget numbers adjusted for then. This is happening in real time. Any other questions? Any other anything else in terms of input or? There's Tom oh. Ferguson. Or... Yeah, I just OK, you got it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. The idea. Want me to read it? Sure. I'm. I'm. Yeah, my. My. So, so Philip Burry sent in a comment. It says, "I think the idea of a three-year outlook is good, and a five or ten-year outlook. Although I realize the effort involved might be too much, would the three-year benefit from consolations before the synod?" So we would again take a, a part of the consultation leading to synod, um, and while we while we get ourselves wrapped around you know budgets at synod. It in in theory, you know, Synod's looking at the the bigger picture, and so that I would argue that that three year plan is actually more critical to have Synod's attention um, than financially than anything else. So I, yeah, we would we would build that three year plan. I would expect that we would follow a similar process. We would come out and look for input and priorities early in the process. And then as we come into Synod, um, walk through, this is what it's looking like. That would be the, the trajectory I would see us that we're, we're working towards. Good, thank you. Thanks, Philip. Always good to hear from you. <laughs> any other questions or any other insights? I mean, it is it is difficult. I've not heard anybody comment on four percent. Um, I'll throw it out there because you know we are sitting in the middle. I've you know I, I can I can speak openly, but some of our clergy have said you know we've you know we're seeing inflation at eight percent. Where where does that leave us? Um, we've got parishes that are saying we can't afford anything. Uh, where does that leave us? And so in in I know speaking to other dioceses, we sit in the middle. 4% appears to be reasonable from both perspectives. One can also look at it and say you you run you could basically run the risk of making everybody unhappy because those that say it's not enough and those that say it's that uh, that it's too much. But that's where we currently sit. Does anybody have any other reflection or thought on that? It's a balance of unhappiness, I guess. So it's a good way to put it, Philip. Lloyd, you've got a 
Well, my, my big concern is that the the, the par parishes or the congregations are having difficulty meeting their obligations, and and a lot of us are going to have to draw money from our investments to keep open. And once those investments run out, I guess there's no alternative but to close that point. And have you uh, did any projection as to the future, how many points you're going to lose in the diocese because there's not going to be income there to, uh, to fund the CMM? So that that of course is that as that's not just a modeling thing. That's a that's a that's a strategic and a, and an ethical always a concern. I think part of that is what we are seeing is that um, as we as we see a lot of parishes and the situations changing, that the, the structure has to adapt with it. Um, that we are we've got, you know as we've seen. Back in the in the the fine old days, there was a lot of small churches that were single point, and what you're seeing now is that um, everybody wants the benefit of senior clergy, but of course, that as as clergy have more experience, they they also um, the, the the cost increases. So what I think we are without question looking at, and that's not just our diocese looking at, is how does the ministry model and the cost of those ministry models adapt. Uh, what we don't want to do is sit and wait in a given church until the, you know, the as you point out, the investments are all drawn down. There's nothing left. Um, and what we also have to look at is how the, the human capital, I, I use that term because we, as we, as I think Trish reminded me when we were opening up, most, I've made the comment before, none of the churches that I've been involved in closures have have closed because with no money they've all left money in the bank um the 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 the, the demise of churches is because of the, the loss of human capital the loss of the people the energy um to to be able to do all those things and the expression we often hear which is bishop we're tired and and there's no longer anybody to shovel the snow to, to print the bulletins to count the collection make sure that the church is is warm and, and clean and that there's no longer to read lessons to share no ministry anymore not even to make coffee anymore for so those are the things that, that tend to happen so we really do need to take to look at how we we evolve our structure and and the final thing and i know there's varying opinions and what we do tend to look at what our churches are, we tend to think of buildings. And where in reality, our churches are the people that make them up. Um, we've, and so some churches are, are building poor, um, and that drives decisions. We've seen several churches that have left, oh, turned away from the, in your own region, right? Um, St. Luke's stepping away from, from the buildings. Um, so there's, there's a number of things where the evolution is not just a budgetary one. It's not just a cost one. Um, it's it's a much larger piece, and that is a a a, a much larger piece of work um, in terms of how the future looks. I do know the bishop is. I think the bishop is still on with us. He, he, are you still there, Bishop? We may have lost our episcopacy. Um, just to invite him to, 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 to I, I'm, I'm here in David's office. Uh, my my office suddenly became an internet free zone, so I've uh, popped over there. But uh, it, it is important, I think, to Lloyd to your point. Uh, I, I do know that there are parishes, congregations, churches when they they're having those kinds of challenges. We encourage them to contact us, and we work with uh, these congregations to kind of build this whole process around a viability plan, looking at their ministry. One of my hopes around Synod coming up in May. I, our keynote speaker is going to be Bishop Susan Bell from the Diocese of Niagara. And uh, her work has been very much involved in, in the phrase, in, encapsulated in the phrase becoming a mission-shaped diocese, which looks at a lot of these issues, considering how we're configured now. How do we have to be configured in the reality of the future that we're going into? Because these challenges, you're absolutely right, Lloyd, these challenges are going to continue. And uh, and we need to be ahead of that curve rather than behind it. So 
we, we certainly always encourage and do work with congregations where these challenges around their viability become quite quite intense. And it, it's, it's wonderful to, in that working with them to watch the ones when they turn around and, and, and go the other way. That's pretty exciting too over time. So it's, uh, it, it's, um, it, it's good work to be involved in and a good question to raise because we have to be very clear about that in terms of how we do all, all sorts of things related to how we're structured as a diocese. Yes, well, I, I, I recall back a number of years ago, you know, quite a few number of years ago when uh, doing the green sheets and so on that every year the income was up and up and uh, we were paying more in common uh, CMM and uh, which was good, but uh, it seems to be it's going the other way right now. It is. That's the Definitely. challenge and the new year is not going to be any kinder when you see the projections coming out of organizations like the Royal Bank and 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 what we're going to be looking at in the early new year. On the, on the positive side, um, I, I can also say, and and um, David and I were both up at um, the parishes of uh, well, Central Frontenac, Charlotte Lake, uh, along with Lakes and Locks, which are the, the good folks at, uh, at uh, Westport, um, Newborough, and uh, and Bedford Mills, and we did some work um, that, and as, as uh, Canon Blair Peaver went in up there, and we did some work with Dave Robinson, Canon Dave Robinson, who's uh, acts as a consultant for us, but did some work around um, the development side and and what's important to people. He's gone out again. Yeah. I think we lost you, Alan. Uh -oh. Did you lose me? Yeah, yep, you're back. Yep. You're back. Oh, I'm back. So, so we did that work. Um, it was very uplifting, actually. Um, it's part of the um, appreciative inquiry work that that Dave led the group through. Um, that that the things that come out that are more hopeful that are more positive, what, what matters to people and where and how things are expressed and where the opportunities lay as we all see the challenges. And uh, particularly when we get into the money, it's always easy to, um, to focus on the negative things or the challenging things, but there are a lot of positives. There are good things as well that we can hope and build on. And again, part of the process and tooling we're putting in place, uh, one of the things is uh, Dave leading the group through that process. We also had um, a facilitator, uh, hopefully but from, from our diocese, that'll pick up from Dave some of how to do some of this work um, so that we start to build our internal capability. So as churches work it through, we are, we are building the capability as a diocese. Any other questions or comments or input before we turn back to our bishop. That always sounds funny, doesn't it? Turn back to the bishop term. <laughs> we always turn back to the bishop. Well, regular here for me is, and as a, as the musician, I am the very, very, uh, uh, usually particularly in Lent, the anthem, turn thy face from my sins. But uh, that, that's a, we'll, we'll go from there. So Bishop, back to you to close the meeting, please. Thank you very much, Alec, and thank you for your presentation today. And I want to extend my thanks to everybody that's on this call today. Uh, you know, it's important, the consultations that we have, and I know that, you know, we have, you know, it's not a large number on this call today, but the, the input that, that the people on this call have given is important. You've showed up. And you've stated what you wanted to say, and that's important and valuable to us, both in terms of setting direction in the budget, and then as we get closer to the decision that Senate Council will make, looking at how we propose to tackle some of these challenges that are in front of us. So your attendance here is deeply appreciated by me. Um, and so anyway, just to close off today with that word of thanks, but we always close off as good Anglicans with the grace. 
please proclaim the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Blessings, everyone, and thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.